Caffeine is the most widely consumed psychoactive drug in the world, mainly because of its mood enhancing and stimulatory effects. In this video, we're going to be examining the pros and cons of caffeine, coffee, and tea. Let's begin with caffeine. Now, as the saying goes, too much of a good thing can be bad, especially true if you are a slow metabolizer of caffeine. About 50% of the population are slow metabolizers due to a gene variant that they carry, which means many of the effects of caffeine are more pronounced and exacerbated due to the fact it takes much longer for caffeine to be completely cleared out of the system, sometimes even taking up to 30 hours. The number one reason why people use caffeine is for its stimulatory effects. It wakes you up via two main mechanisms of action. Firstly, caffeine blocks adenosine receptors. Adenosine itself is produced primarily from physical work and intensive brain use. Thus, over the course of the day, your body accumulates more and more adenosine, eventually making you feel tired and want to go to sleep. Caffeine works by blocking the effects of adenosine. For slow metabolizers, this may mean a cup of coffee or tea in the evening or close to bedtime could leave you feeling a little restless and unable to fall asleep. Secondly, caffeine triggers the adrenal glands to release adrenaline and cortisol, the same two hormones that are released when we are stressed as part of the fight and flight mode to keep us alert and ready to flee from danger. Adrenaline increases blood pressure and heart rate, dilates the arteries of working muscles, allowing for greater blood flow and oxygen delivery. However, it restricts blood flow to the stomach and small intestine, but triggers more movement in the large intestine. If you have ever been stressed, you may have experienced what we call as stress or anxiety-induced diarrhea. Now, for those of you who may live chronically high stress lifestyles, maybe due to work or family demands, I would highly recommend dialing back on your caffeine consumption, or at least reserve it for just the early mornings when cortisol levels are naturally high as part of our circadian rhythms, just so that you don't put extra burden on the adrenal glands. For slow metabolizers of caffeine, the effects of adrenaline can pose more harm than good as this raises your blood pressure and heart rate and can leave you feeling anxious. Additionally, if you already suffer from digestive ailments like acid reflux or IBS, or perhaps you have an autoimmune condition such as psoriasis or eczema or Hashimoto's, I would highly recommend dialing back on your caffeine consumption. Another benefit of caffeine is that it increases your tolerance for pain and hence has been used as a go-to sports supplement and even added to some migraine medications. Keep in mind though, the effects on pain tolerance seems to decrease upon usage. Therefore, it's best to cycle your caffeine, especially if you're using it as an exercise performance enhancer. Please note that if your sport requires flexibility, I would recommend limiting caffeine usage prior to training as caffeine tenses up working muscles. The third benefit of caffeine is that it increases concentration. When consumed, caffeine increases a chemical in the brain known as dopamine. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter responsible for increasing focus, concentration, and is strongly associated with pleasure and reward. Fourthly, caffeine acts as a natural appetite suppressant due to the fact that adrenaline reduces the amount of blood flow to the stomach, which delays stomach emptying. Lastly, caffeine can help you have a bowel movement, preventing constipation. It does this by activating contractions known as peristalsis in your large intestine, similar mechanism to the stress or anxiety induced diarrhea that we talked about earlier. I know what you're thinking, with all these health benefits of caffeine, what is a safe amount to consume before we experience negative side effects such as elevated blood pressure? Well, if you are a slow metabolizer of caffeine, I would recommend no more than 200 milligrams of caffeine per day. Otherwise, Listen to your body and observe any changes in your sleep patterns, bowel movements, along with emotional and mental health. Now, let's take a look at the pros and cons of coffee and tea, which are the primary sources of caffeine in people's diet. The greatest health benefit of coffee and teas are probably for its polyphenols, which are plant compounds that act as antioxidants in the body. Although research does not favor one tea over the other, there is evidence that green tea contains more of these powerful antioxidants. In addition, green tea contains theanine, an amino acid that reduces levels of anxiety and stress. So if you are sensitive to caffeine, green tea might indeed be your cup of tea. 
Interestingly, black tea has the highest caffeine content compared to green or white tea, and light roast coffee beans has the highest caffeine content compared to that of dark roast coffee beans. Although tea and coffee are preferred beverage for many, they do contain a plant compound known as tannins, which inhibit mineral absorption, specifically iron, calcium, and zinc. So it is most advisable to separate your tea and coffees from meals that are rich in iron, zinc, as well as calcium. Now you might be thinking, what about decaf teas and coffees? The process of decaffeination decreases antioxidant levels, but levels of tannins remain the same. Whether you are an avid consumer of caffeine or just use it as an occasional pick-me-up, I hope you found this video helpful. Remember, everything in moderation, including caffeine. Thanks for tuning in today, and until next time, relish every bite.